my December wrap up part two for the month of December. Hmm. Really like. <laughs> Thank you. Jay and today I'm here with my December wrap-up part two for 2018. If you missed part one I will put it up there but I talked about the first six of 13 books that I read for the month so this will be the last seven. So without further ado let us get started. <sighs> the first book I'm going to talk about is Spindle Fire by Lexia Hillier and I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. It follows Aurora and Isabel who are half sisters and the daughters of the King of Deleuze. When they were younger, the fairies of the land tithed certain things from them as payment for the gifts that they bestowed upon them. Isabel lost her sight while Aurora lost her sense of touch as well as her voice. One day, Aurora pricks her finger on a spindle and she falls into a deep sleep and when she awakes, she is in an alternate universe where she meets a hunter named Heath. So now Isabel has to find Prince William in order to give Aurora true love's kiss in order to wake her before the evil queen strikes and war begins. I thought that this book was pretty average. I think that it had a lot of potential but it fell short for me. The bond between the two sisters was definitely my favorite part of the novel. I loved how you could tell that they cared so deeply for each other and would do anything in order to protect one another. I really liked how both of the sisters were very unique and had their own personalities. I definitely liked Isby more and enjoyed her chapters more but I still really enjoyed both of the characters. I still can't decide if I liked the love interests for both of the girls. I liked them at times but then other times I found them both super annoying and I also think that the love triangles were really unnecessary and it definitely brought my enjoyment of the story down. So overall a really average retelling but it was still fun while I was reading it. The next book I have is Berserker by Emmy Laybourne and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars as well. It follows Hayne and her siblings who were gifted with the knight which is basically these like superpowers that are from the Viking gods. Hayne is a berserker which means that when one of her family members or loved ones are in danger she will do anything in order to protect them. After her father is attacked one day Hayne finds herself unable to control her killing tendencies which causes the siblings to have to flee from Norway. On their journey to find their uncle who is also a berserker they meet an American cowboy named Owen who agrees to guide them to the the town of Wolf Creek. But little do they know that somebody a lot more dangerous is also searching for them. I really loved the sibling bond in this book. Nut was 100% my favorite character. He's the youngest brother and he is just like a golden retriever in a person, like just that personality. He's just adorable in a little precious cinnamon roll and you just want to protect him at all costs. Stag is the older brother and he is very level-headed. He always has the group like stop and think about their decisions so he's a good balance. And then Hain, I don't know if I like her yet or not. I can't decide. She was kind of annoying at times but she's also just so strong and fierce and you can't help but root for her. And then Cecil is the youngest sister and she is just annoying. Pretty much all she does is whine throughout the whole story, which like she is very young but like bitch shut up. It, it just got annoying. I also really liked Owen and his dog Daisy was adorable because you know you can never have enough stories with dogs, okay? I'm just saying authors add dogs to your stories. It'll make everybody happy. At times I think that the book was very slow. It was a lot of them just traveling on horseback to Wolf Creek so not a lot of action happened but when the action scenes and fight scenes happened they were really exciting and I definitely liked those a lot more than the travel scenes. I am also a little disappointed in the ending because it just seemed like everything wrapped up way too conveniently but I do know that there is a second book in the series so I'm hoping you know we'll get a little more but I believe that it's just a companion novel and it's following Sissel so not 100% sure if I'm excited or not because Sissel, but I own it so I'm gonna read it because I got sent it for review so 
it'll be on my January TBR. Ha! The next book I have is Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows Theodosia who when she was six years old her mother the Fire Queen was murdered in front of her and she was crowned the Ash Princess as a way to remind the people who the Kaiser took over that a rebellion is not a good idea. Ten years later, Theodosia is living her life as a prisoner, as the Ash Princess, and basically it's her story of meeting an old childhood friend who allows her to start to realize that she doesn't want to be living this life and a rebellion is going to happen. I think that the pacing at times was pretty slow, which was kind of a downer, and it took a very long time for anything to actually happen, but once things progressed, it got a lot more exciting and I became invested in the story. I don't usually like love triangles, as we know, but in this book I thought it was really well done between Sorin, Thora, and Blaze. It was just two tropes that I really like, haters to lovers and friends to lovers, so the whole thing just was great for my little shipping heart. I'm not really sure who I wanted Thora to end up with. I kind of liked both of the options equally, so I'm guessing in the second book we'll learn some more about what's gonna happen. I never understood the friendship between Cress and Theo. I was really annoyed the entire time because Theo just let everybody treat her like shit basically and never fought back. So once she began to fall back, I was just in the corner clapping my little hands being like, yes girl! kill all the people. Overall, I don't think the book was anything overly original, but it was entertaining while I read it, so I'm not mad about it. The next book I have is a graphic novel, which is called Bloom, and this is by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Ganachu, and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. The book follows Ari, who has been working at his family's bakery since he was little, but he's always dreamed of moving away to Baltimore with his friends to pursue a career in music. The bakery hasn't been doing very well for quite some time now, so his father says that if he wants to leave, he's going to have to find a replacement. So that's when Hector, who loves to bake, comes looking for a job and Ari instantly hires him, and as they spend more time together during the summer, things develop into a friendship or maybe a little bit more. I think that this story was very cute. I was definitely rooting for both Ari and Hector. I thought that their story was adorable. I think that both Ari and Hector's stories are very relatable for different reasons. Ari was struggling with who he wanted to be, what he wanted to do with his life, and I think a lot of teenagers are going through that as well, so I think it was really nice to see. And then Hector is struggling with everybody's high expectations of him and doing what other people expect of him when not really following what he wants to do, so I think it was nice to also see that side of the story as well. I also just really liked like the blue hue of the story in the panels. I just think that it worked really well, and I definitely wish that there was a sequel because I want to know what's happening with Ari and Hector now. I just, oh, they were so cute. The next book I have I gave a 3 out of 5 stars as well, and it is a poetry collection called The Chaos Inside Me. This is by Elizabeth Salas, and this is her debut poetry collection. I think that it was very raw and very honest. I also really liked that she included like a page for her trigger warnings and what you should consider before reading that. I think that was a really cool aspect. But yeah, super honest, super raw. It was good. The next book I have is Nameless by Lily St. Crow, and I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. I'm really bummed about it because I was super excited about it because horror fairy tale retelling, but it definitely was not for me. It follows Cammie who grew up in New Haven. She's considered royalty as a, one of the daughters of a Papa Valentino, who is one of the heads of the seven families who rule the town. Cammie knows that, that she is not actually part of the family as she was adopted. A mysterious garden boy named Tor comes into her life and she quickly discovers who she actually is. Honestly, for most of the story I was just confused. Nothing is really explained. You're just dropped into this world and expected to know what's going on. There was a lot of random things that weren't explained so you had no idea what they meant. Like there were creatures called Twisted but then there were also creatures that had potential, but like what the heck is potential? It's never explained, so how am I supposed to know what it is? I'm assuming it's some kind of magic, but who knows? I just have so many questions left unanswered, and I checked to see if this was like a second or third book in a series, but no, it's the first book, so what the heck? I was just pretty bored 
during the entire book because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't get attached to any of the characters. I didn't care what happened to them. So the book just was not for me. And then the final book that I have, I kind of like found it in my other room because I'm currently cleaning out my bookshelves in there because I got a new bookshelf so we doing a purge but I found this one book that was 89 pages so I was like hey let's read it for our Goodreads challenge and see if we can bump it up a little bit but it is Morgan and this is by RJ Furness and it's a very short book like I said 89 pages. It follows Morrigan who is the daughter of Lana and Foy. The people of Scara Tortana are fleeing to Port Harmony because a new ruler is coming into power and they don't like her. So now 11 years later they are found and her parents are taken away from her and she needs to team up with a girl named Haley in order to find her parents before something bad happens. I won this book on a Goodreads giveaway and it came with another book which I'm assuming I was probably supposed to read before I read this one because I was just confused throughout the whole thing. Nothing happened, I was bored and I didn't connect to any of the characters, probably because I had no idea what was going on because I didn't know any of the characters since I didn't read the first book. So, I mean, it's my own fault. I gave it a 1.5 out of 5 stars. And th yeah, that's really all I have to say about this because I screwed up and didn't read the book that I was supposed to, but I have no interest in that book, so sorry, not sorry. All right, guys, so those were the next seven books that I read for the month of December. Let me know down below if you've read any of these and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!